Thank you. Sri A. D. Singh Ji. Thank you very much, Deputy Chairman, sir, uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak. I rise to thank the respected Rajpati Ji for a, uh, his very comprehensive listing of the achievements of the present government and the way forward. Indeed, the catalogue and success and achievement are impressive, and I congratulate the Prime Minister and his team for these successes and also the work in progress. This success will be even better if it was accompanied, accompanied by social cohesion and unity. Unfortunately, the nation's progress is slowed down by divisions that we, are, we see emerging in society. The needs, this needs immediate course correction. This reminds me of an anecdote from Gandhiji's visit to St. Stephen's College as reported in the college magazine of 1915. According to this story, a sadhu came to another iconic leader of our freedom struggle, Sri Gopal Krishna Gokhale, to make suggestions that would suppress a minority community. Gokhale rejected this specious religious reasoning by say, saying that if to be a Hindu, he has to do what has been suggested, then he be better known, known as a non-Hindu. Rashpati Ji said that the government is committed to counter the forces challenging the sovereignty and unity of the country at every level and strict action will be taken against the forces inciting violence. I urge the government to inform the House actions that have been taken so far against those who publicly called for genocide and targeting specific communities. The House will support strictest of action against all such individuals irrespective of their political affiliations. A strong government cannot be seen as going down to a handful of fringe elements who are sowing discord in our society on a daily basis. We pay tribute to the 20 brave hearts who made the ultimate sacrifice to defend every inch of our land in June 2020. But the threats have not diminished. More conflicts have arisen, and despite regular talks, there are no signs of illegal occupation of our land ending anytime soon. The famous slummy slicing policy is in action, and our response has been muted. I need not remind the government that such silence only encourages the aggressor who sees this as a sign of weakness. In addition, our half-hearted half economy countermeasures have been ineffective. Our trade deficit with our main challenger has reached a very new high last year. Protection and unity and sovereignty of the nation is not the work of one individual. It is also not above, ab about seeking personal glory. It is national unity. I would like to pay tribute to General, late General Rawat, our first CDS, but I am disappointing that, disappointed that such a sensitive post has been lying vacant since the tragic accident. I would urge the government to find his successor quickly. It appears that the government has no succession plan or proper personal planning if one sees the number of high-level posts lying vacant in, in the executive and the judiciary. In the speech dealing with foreign policy, I notice a significant omission. Momentous changes have taken place in our neighborhood when a government in Afghanistan was toppled and a friendly people and its friendly people have been brought under an extremist regime that denies all human and basic rights, has dragged the country into unprecedented humanitarian crisis. Historically and including under this government, India has always stood with the people of Afghanistan and helping them in all possible manner rather generously. Our humanitarian assistant is still rich in Kabul. Given our traditionally close relations and brotherhood that Afghans feel for India, we would urge the government of India to stand firmly with the people of Afghanistan and facilitate travel and trade and continuing education of Afghans in India. The policy so far have been has, has so far been left much to be desired. In fact, even today, scores of Afghan students are stranded in Kabul without a visa, denying them the possibility of coming back to the colleges. Their future is being put on hold. Our policy will need to focus on the people and we should be using our influence to ensure the regime in Kabul works towards forming an inclusive national government. Otherwise, it is feared that Afghanistan will become a playground for radical and anti-India groups. Please conclude. India will have to learn to stand with its friends. If not, we will be repeating the historical mistake of once letting down our friendly people of Tibet. It is well documented that the Tibetans never accepted the sovereignty and suzerainty of the Chinese. Even Nehru, who is much loved by the current government, advised them to approach the UN and send a young military officer, Zoravar Bakshi,
to undertake strategic military reconnaissance in Tibet in 1949. Things did not turn out as planned and rest is history. Please conclude. However, the nation faces long-term consequences, both action and inaction, in this increasingly multipolar world in well, India will have to align itself with its own national interests in its own neighborhood and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sri Birendra Prasad Vaishwaji.